I'm Principal of the Fashion Retail Academy and just going to give you some insight into potential careers and pathways that the fashion retail industry offers. Most people think that everything's about the shop, the shop floor. That is the theatre of retail and particularly fashion retail and obviously it's hugely important but today with the omni-channel which is the multi-channel retailing e-retailing, your phones and everything, they, it is just changing, the landscape is changing. And for every retailer at the moment, their largest store is their e-retailing site, by far. And it gives them access into a variety of countries. So there's globalisation going on. Now, if you're not familiar with how large the retail industry is, here are some figures just to give you some insight. It employs over 3 million people. That's right from the shop floor, head office, all the back functions, everything. It is the largest employer outside of the public sector. So it's a hugely important sector to actually attract young people into working. Everybody has experience generally of retail. We've all done it through our summer holidays, working part-time on a Saturday, something like that. And that's part of the experience, but there's an awful lot more to it. The Fashion Retail Academy was the concept and brainchild of Sir Philip Green. He actually felt that those youngsters that were coming into the retail industry were falling into it. It was just by chance. They hadn't chosen it as a career path. He met with the then government, which was the Labour government, previous government, and spoke about bringing in an academy. The government joined forces with Sir Philip and the sponsors, so we have Arcadia, Marks and Spencers, Next and Tesco, who are our principal sponsors. And we have fabulous building in the centre of London and that was their big start to the Fashion Retail Academy. It started in 2006 with 220 students. We're now going, we're in this academic year, we're over 700 students with nine courses. What we do with industry, how we work with industry, is actually asking them the whole time, what are the skills gaps that you have? How can we actually educate, train people to come into the workforce? So all the courses that we have have been designed with industry, by us with educators. So we work with a variety of um, awarding bodies who obviously for the FE sector validate our qualifications. And also we do higher education programmes as well. So we can take somebody at level two where school possibly hasn't been a great success. And as you know, they won't have their five GCSEs and certainly in many cases don't have maths and English. And for us, maths is a real skill that we need. Within every aspect of the retail industry, people have to be able to be comfortable with numbers and work with them. We're not interested in calculus, so you know they're not going to do trigonometry with us or algebra or anything like that. But we want them to be able to do percentages, ratios, adding and subtracting, and dare I say it, use a calculator. Not many can actually use calculators quickly and to the functionality that the industry wants. So we actually educate them to do that as well. I'll just press OK on that, shall I? Where's the exit? Don't bother me. Thank you. Um, as I say, we're working with lots of retailers. We had our four principal sponsors, and we're now working with over 85 retailers on the high street. We totally embed work experience, and I know that's a hot topic at the moment for the government, but every single course that we offer has work experience attached to it. We've listened to industry. 
they want students that have got experience of what the workplace is like. We simulate it as well, but we actually put them into work. And we have a department that organises that. A student doesn't choose their own work placement or has to go out and find it. And we find by working with industry, we organise it, we liaise with them, we inform them who they're receiving, what they have to do with that student, what, they need, what the student's intentions are of getting that work experience. And it's linked back to an assignment that we have set within the academy. And that dialogue that goes on whilst the student's in work experience is invaluable to us because we get up-to-date feedback of what we are doing with the student prior to going out to work, whether it's relevant for that activity that they're there. They'll either be within the store environment or they'll be in head office. Some of our students may even want to go into PR and marketing. Not that we do that per se, but they have an understanding of how that works within the industry. These are some of the roles that the students can go off and work in. And as you can see, there's a vast array of different types of areas they can go into. On the right hand side, all the garment technology, everything there, they're our new courses. We've started to do some fashion clothing because more and more companies are doing samples themselves. So they've got sample rooms. So the skills that they need are good pattern cutters and good machinists. So when we're saying that a student can learn design with us, but we focus on getting them into work as a trainee pattern cutter or a trainee machinist. Some of those students will go on to university and continue with their design and do that, that's fine. But at every single exit point of a course at the academy has a target of getting students into work. On the left hand side you'll see that's the full retail. But on the right hand side you can see where we've got web designers, graphic assistants and designers. That's linked with the e-retailing today. It is very important to every single retailer. So those of you that shop online, you'll know the frustrations if you can't click onto something quickly, observe it, see the price. And my big pet hate, which I keep telling them, is the payment process and the delivery process and also sometimes getting that delivery. Some of them are really listening to lots of their customers and that's the challenge that the e-retailers have at the moment is delivery <coughs> and returns. And you will see, so we're looking at whether we need to start to develop some logistics people that would end up going into the industry to actually, because for the success, to continue for the success of e-retailing, lots of the logistics will need to work. And we've all seen you know, the great in, um, increase in the um, shopping centres as we've got Stratford in the East End and you've got White City up at Shepherd's Bush. And you know, they are still hugely important. Retailing will become part or is part of people's leisure. It's how they meet people, they keep their friendships, they go shopping together. Online is about convenience. It's about just getting things here and now. And for most of us, those that work don't want to hit a crowded shop at Christmas. You can do it online and get it delivered to your home. You might want to go and look at it within the shop before you purchase it. So it's hugely important to all the retailers. Buying an admin assistance, those are very popular areas for people to go into. If you think of The Devil Wears Prada film and based on supposedly Anna Wintour, the huge market that's behind the magazines that supports the fashion industry. They get all the samples and it is said that Anna Wintour actually had to see 
all of the fashion catwalks before at New York before they went down the runway. So each designer had to go through her sort of either saying yes or no to that. That doesn't happen in London, I have to say. Uh, they all um, do it independently. But it just shows you the, the power of the fashion industry. don't know whether anybody went to London Fashion Week, but it was hugely successful this year, massively so, bringing in millions and millions of pounds of work for everybody. Now, they may look crazy designs that go down the catwalk, but they end up in the shop. That colour at least might end up in Primark. That design might end up in Jaeger. They all influence. And there's a huge support of new generation of designers coming on board. And again, we teach our students why designers are so important. You know, you've seen so many of the retailers zone in on a designer that comes and does a guest selection for them. It's massively important. And, you know, we are persuaded to go and purchase things. There's massive psychology behind it all, and we do that as well. So our buying and admin courses are really, really popular. Everybody thinks that they're going to be flown off around the world doing this, that and the other. The realities are that they will be at a factory and they will be doing negotiations with a production team to get the cheapest product made but the best quality that they can afford. So numbers again come into it. Merchandising. We're trying to persuade many boys to go into merchandising. Those that want to go into the city if they like their clothes, go into merchandising. You need to be analytical, you need to be good with numbers. They are the power people behind the business. If you looked at lots of the CEO's CVs in fashion retail, most of them have come up through merchandising. They are numbers people, they are business people. And it's really very, very important. They will do lots of Excel spreadsheet databases, understanding how profit and loss works, working with a buyer to sort of say, well, that looks okay, but I don't think that will sell. Or weather changes, merchandiser looks at the weather, say it's in the summer, it's raining down in Cornwall, flip-flops, stringy tops aren't selling. Well, there's no point in moving them from there up to Edinburgh where it's cold. It's not going to sell. So they have to watch the patterns of movement with sometimes the weather <coughs> to actually maximise getting rid of all of that stock. What they don't want to do is extend a sales period that actually then loses more money. They'll have their balance sheets based on possibly a sales period lasting for two weeks. However, most of you will think, well, I'm always seeing 50% off, 10% off here. But those margins are built in, and we explain to the students how people will still make a profit. So that course does need numeracy. And we go into schools, and we try to get to the 13, 14-year-old to get them inspired into numbers. It's nothing to be frightened of. Though we still have an uphill struggle with them when they come to us, by putting a number of dresses to something, and Aaron jumpers, cable knits, whatever it is, they forget that there's numbers because they're thinking of the product. So we can work with them, and sometimes they can be surprised that they actually can actually do numbers. Lots of them just close off, as you will all know, but they do realise that they can do some numbers. So within the retail industry, you're either creative, doing the design or the buying, because you've got the forecast trend ability. You can actually say, what we need to buy now is going to hit next 13 spring, because that's what they'll be doing now. They'll be buying for 2013. They've got all that information trend forecasting, been watching the websites, they'll know what the colours need to be. 
So you've got all that creativity that somebody can have. Somebody that's analytical, they can really shoot up the business really well through the merchandising. If they're a people's person, they need to be in store. That's where the theatre is. And being a people's person, a communicator, getting your team to work successfully within store, that's a fabulous experience. It's the quickest career trajectory to earn a lot of money within retail. Students don't realise it, but as soon as we show them the career trajectory with a store manager and how fast that can go and the salaries that they can earn, they can be in three figures if they've got Marble Arch or a huge flagship store somewhere else and they can be there within 10 to 15 years. So they can, we find the triggers and we find that money is quite a trigger for some students. You know, if you're talking about careers, personally what I tend to do is say, who wants to live in a small house? Who wants to live in a big house? Who wants to have holidays abroad? Who wants to be camping? Whatever it is. That's not derogatory about people that camp. I do a bit of caravanning myself. But it's trying to hit into that they can't expect to be earning a lot of money if they don't work at something. And they can't expect it immediately. <coughs> so the industry might start off with some lower paid work. But if you are passionate about it, you can actually move your way through. So that's just a selection of some of the careers that... Um, students go on to. We have a really big turnover into work and the success of that predominantly comes from our work experience and that's where industry have had the longest interview with a potential candidate that they can have. So we will do three week blocks or four week blocks twice a year and one of our courses will do a three month block out in store. So that person hopefully is going to secure a job at the end of it. We have a lot of internal progression, students identifying they want the next course with us, so they want to go on to something else, they've aimed themselves higher, and we have a small percentage that go on to university. So everything we focus at the exit point of our students' life with us is about exactly what are you going to do. And we capture that information so we can prepare for the following year. It is about where they're going to end up. It might not be with us, but we hopefully have set them on the career path that's going to get them to their success. We are, everybody that's within the academy has come from retail, the lecturing staff, and we have, like with most places, a mixture of full-time and hourly paid staff. So we have staff that are currently working and come to the academy. We do a variety of different learning styles because, you know, as you know, you know, lots of students want things to be active. We're very fortunate that you know, it's a fashion retail academy, so we have lots of stock around. Those students that want to go into visual merchandising, which is the predominantly the window display or the store layout, we have nine windows within the academy that they dress from a variety of projects. We have master classes, so Sir Philip does come back and do a master class for students, but it will be a variety of CEOs, mark, um, managing directors, brand directors merchandising directors, buying directors, a junior that will have just left from the academy maybe one year ago will come back and support a workshop to say, well I left here, I'm now doing this. So the students can actually see that there is some, we're not just saying that we've got people out in work, we can bring them back and show them. We have simulated or live projects, so we try to work with industry by giving us some real projects to do. So it's not just theory based and they're going to have to deliver on a time scale back to the industry. Um, that can be a bit tight at times, but 
it's about showing some reality. And obviously there are some mistakes made along the way, but, but you know, they'll only learn by those mistakes and thankfully it's within a controlled environment and it's great and they're not going to lose thousands of pounds for a business. And again, with a broader education, there's the gallery visits, the exhibitions and everything. And particularly for the creative side and particularly for the VM, you know, it is about how are you going to make that window as attractive as possible because you all walk down the high street and it's the window that pulls you in or there's something but the future believe me is going to be your phones that are going to take you into a shop because your phones are going to have so much information it's a bit scary but it's just going to track you where you shop how you shop most of the big companies now have that information the information that Tesco have on anybody that shops there is absolutely phenomenal. They really target their shopper to the nth degree. So you might think that you're in control of what you're choosing going down the aisle. You're not. It's all been planned for you. You know, you've got your shopping list, you do that, and then you see something else, and that goes in shopping. I fall for it. I fall for it every time. We all do. You never do exactly what your list does. You do if you're doing it online and you're having it delivered. You do that more, but once you're in the store, you're out of control. They are controlling you. They're getting their money out of you, and that's where it wants. So there's a lot of psychology that goes behind it as well. So it's not just putting that lovely product in front of somebody. You know, you've got to make them want it. You know, why do women spend thousands of pounds on a handbag? it's the hottest thing to be seen with. And if you're spending on a handbag, it can actually keep you more fashionable than sometimes trying to keep up with the actual clothes. We see that with our students, you know, students plead poverty. And I look and I think, but how? How are you carrying that handbag? Or how have you got a Blackberry and an iPhone? They all want to. So, you know, product placements and everything is just amazing. We've got a little video to show you with some past students, if I can get the icon to work. Not only just listen to the students talking, but actually to look at the quality of work, look at the execution and the high level of professional um, presentation that I've lived in to see. The work experience was the best thing because we worked at Selfridges at the Christmas time and it was just fantastic. The second workplace was the New Look and I was in the online merchandising area there and that was perfect for me. The work placements because it's something you don't get in any other courses, they really get you involved. I did mine at Tesco which was amazing. Work experience is invaluable. I mean going out there and I've worked in stores but working in an office environment is completely different. So by doing my work placements at Arcadia and Jaeger gave me real experience of what the work is really like. <laughs> very 
very lucky to have some of the FRA students actually in our work, both in placements and our business sector, who employed some as well. I had three job offers, two of which were at Debenhams and House and Fraser, and the other which was at Burberry, which is the job I'm in now. And the highlight of my um, time at the Fashion Retail Academy would be winning my award that helped me sort of build my career and start my career off. When I left, um, I had managed to secure a position at um, Gibbs and Hawks on Savile Row. Before I left, we had an award ceremony and I got the Marks and Spencers Outstanding Student Award. I um, went straight to Marks and Spencers a week after graduation and I was working as um, a buyer's admin assistant on menswear. I'm now working at Debenhams head office for one of the designer brands, Betty Jackson, as a trainee assistant buyer. At the award ceremony last year, I actually won the FRA Initiative Award, which was really overwhelming, and it was presented by Lisa Snowden. I've gone on to be a press assistant at New Look Head Office. I'm currently at Miss Selfridge at Arcadia, and I'm buyer's admin assistant in the Smart Jersey department. And my one highlight must be winning the awards, just because it kind of was a nice ended a really good year. I applied for a graduate job, but my experience at the Fashion Academy enabled me to stand out against all the other graduate candidates and I got the job at John Lewis. I was on level three and I did the fashion retail course um, for the very first year. I think my, my time being here was great because it set me up for what the real world is going to be like. So I've recently set up my own company called Dirty White Unicorn. One big key thing that I learned at the Fashion Media Academy was, um, was presentational skills, because um, that is a big key thing for buying. It opened my mind to what was out there. I'm definitely glad I came to Tesco's as my first um, buying job. Um, there's a lot of opportunity here. I graduated in June 2008. Um, so three years ago now. So the few skills that I think I learnt at the Academy um, were things like self-disciplining skills and organisational skills. I really enjoyed my merchandising lessons at the Academy um, and it was when I did my work placement at Burton where I realised that merchandising was something that I definitely wanted to do. I think it's really good that the Academy are now teaching students on um, systems like Oracle. Technology is definitely a key part of um, retail. And everyone loves to hear that you've been to the Fashion Retail Academy, it really gets you known. That just gives you some idea of you know, what we've got. Um, there's lots of students, that's just a little sample of them. And also, the Liam that you saw there was our very first student of the year. He decided not to go and do A-levels. He came to the academy. We have a course that equates to A-levels. And he did his year with us, applied to a company where they wanted graduates. He did lie on the first application <laughs> process, got his CV through to them. Then when he was called for interview, he didn't say he had a degree. He didn't say that. But he phoned them and he said, I haven't got a degree. I've done this year at the Fashion Retail Academy, so they called him in and he got selected against graduates. So he was 18. He's now 22, 23. He's 23. His counterparts did A-levels, went to university. They've been struggling to get work, but he's four or five years ahead of them in his career. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen to everybody, but there are alternatives. And vocational education can be as successful, if not more successful, than somebody that goes down traditional A-level and university routes. So I'm not going to say any more. I'm just going to leave it open. Anybody wants to ask any questions? Do you do anything for graduates, sort of like postgraduate? Like we do. Degree? We've got one course going on at the moment so it's called advanced preparation into the industry and it's a six week program that's fully funded though they've got to pay it but we run that three times a year that course gets set over 70 percent into work do you have summer sorry do you have summer sort of tasters so that if you're not sure what direction to go we haven't to date but um we could look at that but you know we, we do encourage everybody to come to open days it's a very active open day. Staff are hugely engaged. Everybody sees the academy. Students are there to talk to them so they can actually get an awful lot from our open days. But does it help them decide what to do? Yes. Yeah. What about this information on the courses? 
uh, on the website. I looked at your website actually, and it hadn't been updated for some time because I wasn't sure whether it was still going on. Brand new it's a brand new website. <laughs> okay. And we're on stand 93. We're on stand 93 downstairs, so come and yes, see so us. come and see yeah. everybody. All, all course information is on the website. Everything yeah. is on the website. And the fees as well. And the fees, yeah. If the 16 to 18, it's like everybody else, it's free. 19 plus, there's co-funded and funded courses. And then we have a series of short courses as well. <laughs> yep. Soon. Yep. Tomorrow. That's all I can say. No, you can't say. I can't say. Are we branching out elsewhere? Yes, we are. So um, hopefully 2013 we'll have another site and then other sites go. Because we do recognise not everybody can come to London. Yeah. It's all based in central London. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Right in the centre, just off Tottenham Court Road. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.